Welcome to Biology for Bastards, teaching biology in the most profane way you've ever seen or heard. I'm your host, John Doty. Thanks for listening. Holy shit, everybody. So much fucking shit has happened since the last episode. Uh, we have a Facebook. We have an Instagram, both of which are probably never going to be used, but you can give it a shot. Um, we're at Bio for Bastards on all of those. We have a website, biologyforbastards.com. It's official. Holy shit. Kind of freaking the fuck out right now, but, you know, that's what we're doing. We're getting big. We're we're doing shit. Um, it's great. Uh, this season, we are going through the AP Biology curriculum, and we're on to Chapter 18, which we're talking about the regulation of gene expression. I am without a beverage this time because I'm just so fucking excited about all the shit going on behind the scenes that I totally forgot it when I started recording, but we're just going to go with it. So this will be a beverage beverageless episode, and we are talking how you control shit. So let's start with bacteria. How the fuck do bacteria regulate their genes? Well, the answer is through these things called operons, okay, which is just a bunch of um, related genes that are controlled at the same time via this on or off switch. We've got three main parts to each operon. We've got the promoter, the operator, and then the actual fucking genes. So what the promoter does is it's kind of like the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men showing where RNA polymerase can attach. We have the operator, which is the on and off switch that controls the access of RNA polymerase to the actual gene. And then the gene, if you don't know what that is, you are fucking screwed. So, um, yeah. Now, we do have this regulatory gene that is upstream of this whole operon that makes this repressor protein that will bind to the operator site. What the operator does is it actually physically blocks RNA polymerase from getting to the gene. And we have two types of operons. We have repressible and we have inducible. Now your repressible operons are normally on but will be turned off at certain points. Okay? And they are typically anabolic in nature, so they build organic molecules. And what the molecule um, does is it acts as a co-repressor, which will bind to the repressor to activate it which I know that sounds backwards, that you're binding to the repressor to turn it on, but in that case, you turn the operon off. So let me say all that shit again. It's normally on, you are building organic molecules, it's anabolic, and you have this molecule that will bind to the repressor to activate it, and by activating the repressor, you turn the operon off. And the example of that is the TRP operon, which um, has um, has stuff to do with tryptophan. So it's normally on making tryptophan, but if there's tryptophan present in the environment, the repressor becomes active and the operon is turned off. Because why the fuck are you going to make your own tryptophan when there's tryptophan already around? It's fucking pointless. So don't do that. So that's a repressible operon, where it's on and it can be turned off. And the opposite is an inducible operon that is normally off, but can be turned on. So what happens with these is they are catabolic, they break down shit, and the inducer will bind to the repressor to inactivate it. So it's normally off, the repressor is active, just normally an inducer will bind to the repressor, inactivating it, and turn the operon on. That is the LAC operon, which has to do with lactose. So lactose is the um, sugar in milk. And when there's no sugar in milk, why the fuck are you going to make the enzyme, or the gene, why are you going to read the gene that breaks down lactose, because it's fucking pointless. But when lactose is present, we need to inactivate the repressor, turn the operon on so that we can break down lactose. With me so far? Good. Now, with gene regulation, we do have negative control 
and positive control. Negative control is everything that I just talked about, where the operons are switched off by an active form of the repressor. We do have positive control, which is where the regulatory protein will interact directly with the genome to increase transcription. Um, that's best illustrated with CAMP and CAP, which is positive control. So CAMP, what it does is it accumulates when you don't have glucose present, so when glucose is scarce. And CAMP will bind to CAP, which is catabolite activator protein. So it's CAMP binding to this protein, and when CAP is active, it'll bind to DNA upstream of the promoter, which increases the, the affinity of RNA polymerase to the promoter, and that increases transcription. So that's positive control. As the stuff builds up, it is activating the protein, which is increasing transcription. Now, in eukaryotes, things get a little more complicated. And I just want to take this moment to apologize for any weird-ass dog noises you hear. I'm still recording in a closet, so my dogs are outside. They're a little pissed at me because I'm locked in a closet and they want to say hi. But I'm fucking busy, so doing this for everybody listening. So you're welcome. You're pissing off my dogs. But I'll, I'll take it just for you. You're welcome. Um... Now, when we are regulating genes in eukaryotes, it's a lot more complicated. We got a lot more fucking genes. Um, typically, we're a lot more complicated. Like, for example, in a human, only about 20% of the genes are going to be expressed at any given point in time because we've got all these different cell types. They all have identical genomes. So in our eyeballs, we've got lens cells that have genes for bones and muscles and everything, but we don't want them to be bones and muscles. We want them to be a lens. So we need to be able to turn on specific genes to do specific jobs. And the way we do that is through differential gene expression. And we can regulate um, gene expression at a shit ton of different stages. So if you're following along with the PowerPoint, um, which if you go to the website, www.biologyforbastards.com, I have each episode posted with the PowerPoint on the same page so you can follow along a hell of a lot easier than it has been in the past. So there you go. Reason to check out the new website. Um, you can see all the different ways that we're going to talk about and we're going to start with regulating it at the chromatin stage. So what chromatin is, it's this tightly bound DNA which makes it hard to transcribe. You can have methyl groups added to this DNA, which will decrease transcription, make it even more tightly packed. But you can have histone acid acidulation, where you are loosening the chromatin and increasing transcription. So when you have these methyl groups added, you are decreasing transcription. When you have these um, acetyl groups added, to the histones, you have increased transcription. So that's one way at the very beginning that we are able to regulate our gene expression. From that point, we can have um, these differences passed on. This is where we get into some epigenetic shit, where these modifications, these methyl groups, these um, acetyl groups, they can be passed on to future generations and they are reversible. Okay, so you can demeth there can be demethylation of DNA and all this stuff. And this is one of the reasons why identical twins are not exactly the same. They might have identical genomes, but they will have different epigenomes. So differences in these methyl patterns and everything. Now, as we kind of get further along in the whole transcription and translation process, we can have um, differences in transcription initiation where we have different um, transcription factors whether they're activators or repressors binding to different enhancer regions of the DNA um, based on their names you could probably figure out that activators increase transcription while repressors decrease it um, activators will bind to various places 
in the DNA to make the initiation complex um, actually occur. While we have um, the repressors decreasing it, that just keep all that shit from happening, blocking it from occurring. Um, continuing on in various ways to alter or to regulate our gene expression, we can have the regulation at the mRNA stage, where we can have microRNA or um, interfering RNA, RNA interference, that will bind to the mRNA to either degrade it or to actually block it, block it from being translated. Um, these fucking dogs, I swear. Here I am trying to make a professional sounding podcast and in the background you got dogs. Um, they're so sweet though. I, you gotta love them. It's a corgi and a terrier and a dachshund. So weird ass funny looking dogs. Those are the bastards that we have. Okay. Um, then from there, continuing on with gene expression in eukaryotes, there can be a bunch of shit. There's a good little summary of it in the PowerPoint that you can follow along with. Again, at www.biologyforbastards.com. I'm just super proud of that website. Go check it out. Um, we're going to kind of change gears ever so slightly and talk about... All right, so we're modifying these genes. We're regulating this gene expression. What the fuck the, does that have to do with anything? What are the consequences or the results of all this gene regulation. Well, in some um, multicellular organisms, we have embryonic development going on. We have to have this complex gene regulation in order to develop to this big multicellular organism. So when it comes to embryonic development, there's a lot of shit going down. We have division going on because we just need to go from one cell to a shit ton of cells. We have differentiation going on because we need to go from unspecialized to very specialized. We have morphogenesis going on, which is how the organism gets its shape. All this shit is happening at the same time. So we have to have different types of determination occurring. And all determination is is just these irreversible series of events that lead to differentiation. So it's like micro differentiation, if you kind of want to think of it that way. Um, and we have these things in the cytoplasm called cytoplasmic determinants. Go fucking figure. Um, and there are things that you get from the mother that early on in things, early on in development, they will be unevenly distributed because as the cell just splits, they're kind of floating around in the cytosol and you get a big concentration in some, smaller concentration in others, and that can cause um, early differentiation to occur. That leads to induction, which is triggering cells to differentiate. That changes some cell-to-cell -cell signaling. We have cytokine action and paracrine, autocrine signaling, all this shit going on where we're sending signals to other cells that leads to different pattern formations of setting up the body plan, you know, the head, shoulder, shoulders, knees, and toes sort of thing. And then we've got, you know, these things called morphogens, which help determine our axes, you know, head to tail, front to back, left to right, all this shit. Those are determined by these things called morphogens. Then we get homeotic genes which help control patterns. Basically, embryology is fucking complicated as hell. And we could spend an entire season, which we might, talking about embryology and how the fuck do you go from one cell to a fully grown organism. So if you just got super confused by all the shit I just said, that's okay. Not a huge deal. Moving on. Um, let's talk about cancer. So embryo embryonic development is what happens when things go right. Okay. Successful control, successful regulation. Cancer is when that regulation goes awry. And, 
Um, so we've got different genes. We've got proto-oncogenes, which increases cell division. We have tumor suppressor genes, which inhibit cell division. And it's kind of the balance between these that creates a normal, healthy cell cycle. If either of these genes get mutated, that can lead to cancer because you are either upstimulating cell division or you are downregulating um, the control over cell division. So what a proto-oncogene is, is a gene that stimulates normal cell growth, normal cell division, but if that gets mutated, it is now a cancer-causing gene. That's why it's an oncogene. And what it does is it increases the activity of every protein molecule produced by the gene, and that can lead to the formation of cancer. There's a couple big um, infamous, we'll call them genes involved in cancer. We have RAS and we have P53. Um, RAS is a proto-oncogene. It stimulates the cell cycle. And a mutation in RAS is going to occur in roughly a third of all cancers. So that's pretty common. And then on the other side, on the tumor suppressor side, we have P53. And what it normally does is it stops the cell cycle so that you can repair DNA. It um, activates apoptosis, which is that programmed cell death. So it basically makes sure your DNA is not fucked up. And if something happens to that P53 gene, which there is a mutation in it in over half of all cancers, you get cancer. Um, so you really get cancer when you get multiple mutations accumulating, um, typically anywhere between five to seven different changes in the DNA. And you definitely, definitely kinda end up with cancer when you have those proto-oncogenes getting messed up and the tumor suppressor genes getting messed up in the same cell at the same time. So with that, it basically brings us to the end of gene regulation. All that fun shit. Um, I just want to apologize for how much of a shit show this episode was. Um, fucking dogs wouldn't train them for the world, but they're a pain in the ass. Currently, one is going through shit in the room attached to my closet where I record. So... Just apologies for how distracted everything sounded with this one, but hopefully I did a good job. If I didn't do a good job, feel free to reach out on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. We're at Bio for Bastards on all three. I currently have a dog in my lap right now. Holy shit. Um, Bastard of the Week. We've been getting a little bit more, um, getting a little bit bigger each time. And just want to give a shout out to Grant and Zoe. Told them I'd give them a shout out. So there you fucking go. Calm down. Leave me alone now. And please rate, review, subscribe. I'm sure everybody knows at least one other person who would enjoy this show. If you could tell them, I would be so happy. The podcast would grow so much faster if everybody picked one friend and told them about the show, got them listening, and that person got one friend and just spread like a virus, which we'll talk about next time, two times from now. Who the fuck knows? Coming up real soon, viruses. Um, so help this podcast go viral. See what I did there? I'm a professional. By telling people you know, rate, review, subscribe, all that fun shit. Um, our intro and outro music is the song Feeling Good by Purple Planet Music. And with that, I want to say until next time, thanks for listening. Bye.